Good evening and welcome to this regular meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth. Our meeting date is Monday, December 12th, 2022. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the clerk to note our starting time for the minutes is 7 p.m. Councillors are in the chamber in Listool, joined by the clerk and some staff who are supporting the meeting. We continue to use web conferencing technologies for some who will participate in tonight's meeting. A warm welcome is extended to councillors, staff and delegations who will participate in the meeting, regardless of whether using technology or being physically in attendance. We begin tonight's meeting with the playing of O Canada. Those in chambers as able are invited to stand. that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. To those viewing this meeting via the YouTube channel, a warm welcome to you. To those present in the gallery today by attending a public meeting of the Council, you are consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances when deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their actions result in inappropriate and or unacceptable behavior and or comments. Thank you. At this time, I invite your decorum, as always, over the course of the coming meeting. I do have regrets tonight from Councillor Leanne Andreessen, who will be with us next week. Let us move uh, to item 2.1 of our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with the potential pecuniary interest or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with a perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared already in writing, to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. Colleagues, I'm not sure I've seen anything ahead of this meeting at this point in time, so I invite your... Uh, Declarations, if you have any to make. I'm not seeing any, so that allows us to move forward. 
All participants are invited to speak when called upon by yours truly serving as chair. Those participating remotely who wish to speak may draw the attention of the clerk through our conferencing technology's text chat function. Remote participants are asked to generally maintain a mute state in the web conference until I recognize your right to the floor. If when I do so recognize I don't hear you because you are muted or having some technical difficulty, I will advise. Let us now focus on the people's business. I invite those in the chamber to silence and put away their phones. On this occasion, just before we sneak into the item 2.2, I note that it is Councillor Duncan's birthday. He's ducking his head because he knows what happens at this council when it's his birthday. Councillor Rothwell, shall you and I do the, the honours? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Matt. Happy birthday to you. It's, <laughs> it's a danger to uh, have your birthday on a council day. Um, I, I discovered that once in the last four years. All right, uh, let's move to item 2.2 of our agenda. Uh, I do have a, a minor adjustment that has been made uh, in the interest of uh, staff who was unable to attend this evening. So um, the resolution reads a little differently than uh, what is before you in your package as follows, that it, the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved as amended to remove item 5.5.1, which is the facilities organizational overview. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Blazek, thank you. And Councillor Duncan will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, let's move forward then to item three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require council's recognition and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are three items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further the discussion or action. Seeing no such intent, I have a resolution for consideration as follows, that consent items 3.1 to 3.3 be received for information and the minutes of the December 5th, 2022 regular council meeting be adopted. Councillor Johnston will move and Councillor Rothwell will be our seconder. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Uh, that moves us forward to item, agenda item number four. Tonight we have two public meetings that have been scheduled pertaining to land use matters. To enable a public meeting, we must temporarily adjourn from council. Uh, I have a resolution that allows us to do that as follows, that the council of the municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7.08 p.m. For the purpose of a public meeting under the Planning Act concerning the following. Application for zoning bylaw amendment number ZBA 19-2022 by Toll Acres Limited and Adrian Anthony Tolinar. An application for zoning bylaw amendment number ZBA 16-2022 by Scott Patterson on behalf of Gordon and Darlene Galbraith. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Anstead, thank you. And Councillor Nurdam will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. We are temporarily adjourned from our regular council meeting. Let's turn to the festivities here. This is a public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act. Uh, welcome to those who are attending the public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act for a proposed amendment to the North Perth Zoning Bylaw. This is a statutory public meeting to deal with an application for Zoning Bylaw Amendment Number ZBA-19-2022 by Toll Acres Limited and Adrian Anthony Tol Tolinar, affecting property described as Lot 24, Concession 17, Elma Ward 55, 70, Line 57, Municipality of North Perth. Correspondence, reports, and comments received 
regarding this application will be considered by Council. Those in attendance remotely wishing to make comments concerning this application will be given an opportunity to do so. Anyone wishing to appeal Council's decision in this matter must make verbal submissions during this public meeting or have made a written submission to Council. Those wishing to receive notice of the decision regarding this application must notify the clerk via email or telephone, giving their mailing address and telephone number. At this time, I will call for a summary of this application. This will be offered by Mr. John Bice, who is a planner for the County of Perth, who works on North Perth Files. And Mr. Bice, let me just get the audiovisual set up. Thank you, Mayor, Kaysenberg, and Council. So this application is for ZBA 19-22. Uh, it's a zoning bylaw amendment for a surplus farm dwelling severance. Um, the owners are Toll Acres Limited and Ad Adrian, Adrian Anthony Tolinar, um, and it's located at 5570, line 57. You can see by the red star on the slide there, uh, it's just east of Moncton, so in the southern portion of North Perth. So the zoning bylaw amendment, uh, as stated before, uh, is a condition of a surplus farm dwelling severance. Um, this severance file number was B32-21, uh, and which was conditionally approved on October 3rd, 2022. Uh, the severed lot will be 1.57 acres, uh, and the retained being 60.3 hectares. <clears throat> So the area outlined in yellow, as you see on the slide, uh, is to be rezoned A1 to allow a non-farm residential dwelling. And the area outlined in red will be rezoned A-62 to ensure no residential dwellings or mobile homes can be established on the property. No adverse effects uh, are anticipated from the lot reduction. Uh, so, oh, sorry, not the lot reduction. No adverse <laughs> effects are anticipated uh, through, through the zoning bylaw amendment. So you see with this photo, uh, this is the dwelling located on the uh, property, on the severed lands, and the CBO deemed the dwelling habitable on May 24th, 2022. So a condition of consent uh, was for the barn uh, to have a change of use permit, um, and this will be done through the consent. Um, and the barn was close to being the 10% lot coverage for the property, but is under, so it does not need site-specific provisions for that. And that is the end. Uh, so the application was circulated and notice was provided via sign on November 21st. No comments have been received from members of the public uh, to this date, but if uh, members of the public uh, would like to comment now, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Bice. Let me just check in with the clerk. You haven't received any additional correspondence or reports pertaining to this request uh, for the zoning bylaw amendment. Okay, uh, that was a no from the clerk. All right, uh, so this is the opportunity for comments to be made on this application. Uh, we do this in an order, and uh, first we call for those who are in favor other than the applicant, if any. Let me turn to the clerk. Uh, have we received any indication uh, of individuals who would like to express uh, favor in favor of this application? We have not, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, next, then, we turn to those who may be opposed to this application. Again, turning to the clerk, has anyone queued up for this purpose? No. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the opportunity for the applicant or the applicant's agent to speak. Um, between Mr. Bice and Clerk Klein, do you have any awareness of the applicant or the applicant's agent expressing an interest to speak tonight? I, I'm not, I have not been made aware. Okay, and, uh, I'm not aware either. Okay, thank you. Um, and we don't have them with us online, I assume, at this point. All right, thank you. Uh, Council, opportunity for you to ask questions or make comments about this uh, zoning bylaw amendment request. Anyone have anything to say about this one? Okay, I'm seeing general uh, indication that there is there are no further comments to be made. Um, so, notice of the decision of, of Council will be given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Council's decision is subject to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. And that means that we can adjourn that meeting. We have one more tonight uh, related to planning matter. Um, so this is a public meeting. Uh, 
Welcome to those attending the public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act for a proposed amendment to the North Perth Zoning Bylaw. This is a statutory public meeting to deal with an application for Zoning Bylaw Amendment number ZBA-16-2022 by Scott Patterson on behalf of Gordon and Dal Darlene Galbraith affecting property described as 880 Tremaine Avenue, Plot 509, Lot 5, Elma Ward, Municipality of North Perth. Correspondence, reports, and comments received regarding this application will be considered by Council. Those in attendance remotely wishing to make comments concerning this application will be given the opportunity to do so. Anyone wishing to appeal Council's decision in this matter must make verbal submissions during this public meeting or have made a written submission to Council. Those wishing to receive notice of the decision regarding this application must notify the clerk via email or telephone, giving their mailing address and telephone number. At this time, I will call for a summary of this application. Mr. Bice remains in front of us, the planner for the County of Perth. Mr. Bice, the floor is yours. Thank you again, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council and members of the public. So this zoning by law amendment um, has been um, perpetuated by the consent applications that were brought forth to you uh, last week on December 5th. Uh, so the consent applications are B4422 and B4522. So the consents have not yet been approved by the county, who is the, the approval authority for consent applications, uh, as many of you are aware. Uh, and this public meeting has been scheduled to receive comments from the public uh, and council uh, regarding the zoning by law amendment. The public meeting is being held prior to a decision on the consent applications. After the consent applications are approved, the zoning by law amendment will come back to North Perth Council uh, with a recommendation. So I just want to re reiterate that we don't have a recommendation at this time. North Perth Council is the approval authority for zoning by law amendment applications, as many of you are aware. So slide two here um, just kind of goes over, uh, again, the severance applications that were brought forth last week. Uh, and the purpose of the zoning by law amendment is to rezone each of these three lots um, proposed to be created. Uh, the rezoning application is considering the following planning discussions, and I'll get into that uh, through the slide. So as you see through this map, um, and I forgot to put the, the red star on there, but uh, the subject lands are one of the very s tiny, uh, based on um, the aerial image here of the urban fringe designation in the Perth County Official Plan. So that's the purple uh, along Tremaine Avenue, kind of near the center of that um, aerial view there. The subject lands are also zoned rural residential, as you see by that uh, yellow coloring uh, in the North Perth zoning by law. So a couple planning questions to consider at the public meeting here today. Um, and they're, they're mostly regarding uh, B45-22, but we'll also get into each three of the, the, the proposed lots. Um, so the first planning question would be, um, regarding the reduction from 3.6 meters required um, in for the interior side yard setback um, and 1.5 meters is proposed for the B45-22 uh, severed lot and 2.7 meters is proposed for the B44 uh, consent and that is the southern and B45 is the more northern of the two. Another question to consider uh, is does this reduction provide uh, enough space for parking? Uh, does the reduction provide enough space for the residents uh, to access the rear yard with lawn mowers and equipment, et cetera? Um, and then we'll get into the, we can, we'll get into that going forward as well. So the subject semi-detached dwelling uh, considered for the two severed portions of the two applications is you can see uh, by this image here, um, and B44 is the semi on the right, and then B45-22 is the semi detached on the left. Uh, the interior side yard setback uh, is considered legal non-conforming, uh, or sorry, legal non-complying, that should say, uh, for B44-22, and the 1.5 meter setback uh, proposed um, would 
not be necessarily uh, necessary. I believe Scott Patterson is on the call and he might be able to speak to uh, some reasoning behind wanting to include that in the site specific provisions of the zoning bylaw amendment. And then the yellow arrow, arrow there is um, the 1.5 meter setback um, that is proposed. Um, and that's just kind of an approximate, it's not, it's not to scale. So this is the side yard that um, is considered legal not conforming, or sorry, again, I should say legal not complying, um, and that's B44-22, that would be the more southern lot. So the consent applications uh, consider a site-specific provision on both of the applications uh, to increase the lot front, or the front yard setback. Um, to the 16 meters that is existing today. And that is due to the industrial uses the, uh, that are located across the street. And there's uh, the other one there. This is an image of uh, the access along Tremaine Street um, and three accesses uh, are considered acceptable uh, based on um, North Perth um, comments on this application. This is an image of the retained land. And this is another image of the retained land. So we're going into it a little bit in more in detail. Um, B44-2022 is the southern lot as we've uh, identified in this presentation. And just to give a quick high level kind of what's going on with, with each, um, the rural residential or zone of the property is proposed to be changed um, to residential four special um, and that would be to um, again as I've, I've stated to uh, look into the interior side yard setback of 2.7 meters where 3.6 is required um, some department additions would be that front yard setback um, and then we can go on to the next one so this is the northern lot that should say B45-22 um, and that is also zoned rural residential, and it is it is also proposed to go to a residential for special uh, zone. This is the lot with the interior yard setback of 1.5 meters, where 3.6 is required. Uh, it's also proposed that the lot frontage uh, of 8.8 .8 meters uh, be the lot frontage through site specific, where 9 meters is uh, required. And then the retained lands are zoned rural residential, and they are proposed to be rezoned rural residential special uh, with a holding provision on top. So that will read RR-12-H7. Uh, and this is to recognize a lot area reduction. 2,400 square meters is required, and 2,100 square meters is proposed. So the department addition to this is the holding zone um, that would require a compatibility study to evaluate any impacts future residential development will have and vice versa on the industrial uses across the street. And this is just kind of a high level um, what's going on with all of them um, and instead of me rereading that all I'll just let uh, council take a look um, and I'll go into the notice of application circulated um, according to the requirements of the Planning Act, uh, and a sign was also posted on the property on November 21st, and no comments have been received from members of the public. Uh, and I believe um, Scott Patterson should be on the line to take any, uh, to make some comments, some questions, and I'll take any questions as well. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Bice. Um, just turning over to the clerk to make sure that we've covered our bases with regards to correspondence and reports received. Mr. Bice has declared he hasn't received any. Have any uh, come to your attention? Mr. Mayor, no, I have not received anything. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that means that we can move forward then to the opportunity for comments from uh, the public and council. First, I'll uh, call for uh, those who are in favor of this application other than the applicant. Clerk Klein, are we aware of any who've registered for that purpose? I'm not aware, no. Thank you. Uh, let's turn next to those who may be opposed to this application. Clerk Klein, do we have any indication of that for this public meeting? No. 
Thank you. Next is the applicant or the applicant's agent. We do understand that um, Mr. Patterson is with us this evening. Uh, Mr. Patterson, if you wish to avail yourself of the opportunity to make comments, you're welcome to do so. Uh, good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. Again, Scott Patterson on behalf of the property owners. Uh, here in full support tonight um, of the application as submitted, staff have included a request to recognize the existing front yard setback for the buildings, which I fully support. I'm in full support of the holding provision for the retained lands as well. Uh, one item that has come up is the discussion about the interior side yard setback. We have requested a reduction down to 1.5 meters. And I know that in Mr. Bice's report, he'd question whether that was appropriate or not. Um, in my opinion, I believe it is appropriate. 1.5 meters or five feet will allow for satisfactory access to the rear yard for maintenance purposes, et cetera. And the 1.5 meters reflects the lot lines that were uh, supported and therefore endorsed by council at the meeting last week. Um, so a change in the lot line would actually be contrary to what was discussed and uh, recommended for approval at last week's meeting. So I was a little surprised to see that in the staff report and recommendation or something that we needed to discuss. Um, perhaps that should have been discussed before the consent applications came forward with a recommendation for approval. Uh, but again, I do believe the 1.5 meter setback is appropriate and uh, we'd like to proceed on that basis. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer. All right, thank you, um, Mr. Patterson. Um, this provides us with the opportunity to turn to council for questions or comments on this application. Anyone have anything? Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd, and good evening, uh, Council. Uh, question through to uh, uh, our planner here. Uh, the uh, proposed uh, interior side area of the 1.5 metres on the uh, northerly lot, <coughs> uh, is that on the basis of uh, proposed uh, development on the uh, area to be uh, retained? And do we know what that is and whether it's through you or whether it's through Scott Patterson. Yes, perhaps. Uh, I, I believe that he might be better suited to answer that. Sure. Sure. Um, Mr. Patterson, did you wish to uh, answer Councillor Rothwell's question? Yes, uh, through you, Mayor Gasenberg. Uh, the form of development for the retained lands has not yet been formalized. A concept plan illustrating a development was submitted to the town for pre-consultation. Uh, it was a residential development naturally, but at this time I'm not at liberty to divulge the, uh, the nature of that development. Uh, any development on those lands that was outside of the rural residential zoning would require a zoning bylaw amendment and the lifting of the H that's proposed by staff. So if there was any development it would naturally come back before council for consideration at that time. I hope that answered Councillor Rothwell's question. I couldn't hear Mr. Bice when he responded. So if I didn't, please let me know. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rothwell, anything further? Uh, thank you very much. Just uh, a further uh, question here. Uh, in the report, uh, Planner Bice, uh, we talk about uh, the parking and uh, obviously we're not into site plan details or anything here, but uh, presumably in the response that North Perth uh, Public Works had uh, in terms of ensuring that there's uh, culverts along the uh, drain as there is currently uh, with the existing driveway. Uh, we've ascertained, you've ascertained that there's enough parking space in, in, fr in the front yards for both of these uh, two existing dwellings? Through your Mayor, Mayor Kaysenberg, uh, yes. So we've received correspondence from uh, North Perth staff who have indicated that three, um, three accesses onto each specific um, lot um, is acceptable um, and um, I guess further um, discussion on that matters can always happen during uh, site plan um, but I'm not uh, I, I'm not too sure if this would go to site plan as considering it's uh, semi-detached dwellings on mm -hmm. uh, that are existing um, dependent pull on the retained land development which we are not sure uh, of what would it, will it be at this point um, with the new rules and regulations that are unfolding before us. Uh, we're not sure uh, about that. So I'll just quickly wrap up and say three 
entrances was deemed accessible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments about this one? Okay. I'm not seeing any. Uh, thank you to those who participated. A notice of the decision of council will be given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Council's decision is subject to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. And with that statutory statement made, we can declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Bice. All right, uh, Council, let's um, bring us ourselves back into regular Council session. I have a resolution to do that as follows, that the public meeting under the Planning Act is now adjourned at 7.30 p.m. And that Council reconvenes into regular open Council. Uh, Deputy Mayor Callum will serve as our mover. Councilor Richardson is our seconder. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor. I'm just uh, waiting for my computer here. And that is carried with Councillor Rothwell indicating a little bit of technology and speed challenge there. Give the hamsters a little flick. All right. Um, with that being carried, that brings us back into session. That allows us to pursue uh, resolutions uh, related to these matters. And I have a few. So let's turn to item 4.1. Um, this is the uh, Talanar property, uh, and I have uh, two resolutions for consideration. The first is follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth receives a report entitled Zoning Bylaw Amendment Number ZBA-19-2022 by Toll Acres Limited and Adrian Anthony Talanar, affecting lands described as Lot 24, Concession 17, Elma Ward 5570, Line 57, Municipality of North Perth, and that Council approves Zoning Bylaw Amendment Number ZBA-19-2022, affecting lands described as, par as Lot 24, Concession 17, Elma Ward, 5570, Line 57, Municipality of North Perth. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Richardson and Councillor Duncan will be our seconder. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. That is carried. Thank you. And next, then, is the uh, bylaw enablement resolution as follows. Uh, that bylaw number 156-2022 being a bylaw to amend the North Perth signing, zoning bylaw number 6 zb 1999 as amended, be introduced, read, and considered read first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And that, said by, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. My tongue was moving fast there. Councillor Rothwell is our mover. Councillor Blazek is our seconder. Any discussion or debate on the bylaw? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Next is item 4.2. And um, this one is uh, somewhat simpler. As the planner indicated, there was not uh, an inherent recommendation tonight because there's still some county action to happen on this file. So the resolution is as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth receives a report entitled Zoning Bylaw Amendment Number ZBA-16-2022 submitted by Scott Patterson on behalf of Gordon and Darlene Galbraith, affecting lands described as 880 Tremaine Avenue, Plan 509, Lot 5, Elma Ward, Municipality of North Perth. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Johnston, thank you. And Councillor Noordam will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. All right. That means we can move uh, forward this evening. We do have a delegation planned under agenda item four, uh, delegation to council. I will remind uh, the delegation, of course, that a total time of 10 per minutes is permitted. And uh, we ask that that include both presentation time and providing an opportunity for councillors to ask a few questions. Um, the delegate is to present on the topic declared on the submitted request for delegation form and deviations from the topic are not acceptable to the chair or this council. As always, we expect respect and courtesy. Our delegate this evening, I believe, is Pierre Chauvin from MHBC Planning, and um, he wishes to speak to an agenda item that's a little bit later in our meeting. Um, Mr. Chauvin, I believe, is connecting remotely. There's his wonderful face. Welcome, Mr. Chauvin, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. 
Dr. Kaysenberg, members of council. I'll be very brief because unfortunately I'm double booked tonight and have to be at K Kitchener Council in about two minutes. So uh, I'm just here really in support of the bylaw that you have on your agenda later this evening. We have reviewed and discussed the bylaw uh, with uh, Ms. Reed at the county uh, extensively uh, leading to this point and uh, here to answer any questions that council may have. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Chauvin. Let's turn to council. Do we have any questions that uh, you believe you'd like Mr. Chauvin to answer before we hit um, the section in the agenda that pertains to this uh, the matter that's before council? Okay, we're not seeing any questions for you, Pierre. Um, give Mayor Barry my best and uh, off you go. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, council. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Um, that brings us to uh, then item, agenda item five, reports from departments of key staff. Uh, this evening we have no reports from the CA's department. Uh, next up then would be item 5.2, reports from the strategic initiatives portfolio. And tonight we have no reports brought to this table by our manager of strategic initiatives. Further, we have no reports coming from the manager of corporate services. I need to assure that all these people are working very hard and, and doing lots of things in the interests of the community. Let's turn now then to uh, item 5.4 our, on our agenda reports from the manager of programs. In light of our ongoing training efforts for this new term of council as item 5.4.1, we are tonight going to receive an organizational overview of the programs department. I'll call on manager of programs, Ms. Amy Gangle, to provide us with an orientation to the department's roles and activities. Welcome, Ms. Gangle. Thank you, Mayor and members of council. Yes, I'll be presenting the highlights of the roles and responsibilities under the programs department. Our department's charter is fostering a sense of community through quality programs. Quality programs provide social settings that brings a wide range of benefits of your children, youth, adults, seniors, families, and communities. Programs can support social, emotional, and cognitive development, reduce risky behaviors, promote physical health, and promote a safe and supportive environment for people. Program department's areas of responsibilities includes child care and early on programs, as well as the before and after school care, day camps, recreation and community programs, including sports, recreation, arts, and culture. We offer first aid courses, babysitting courses, home alone courses. We offer aquatic programs that are two outdoor pools. We are the Meesway North Perth representative on the Community Character Committee, Community Safety and Wellbeing Planning Council, here on Perth Ch Children's Charter Rights, and many more. We promote, coordinate, and evaluation programs, filling in gaps where needed, and improving services to our citizens. We apply to grants for programs and services or partner with other departments on developing grants for their projects. We are the home of the Community Connection Newsletter. This is an organization structure of our programs team. Uh, it's been in existence for uh, almost two years since the recreation department branched out into the programs department and facilities. We also partner with and provide support for the library as needed. There is a future position as the admin assistant uh, to be filled in our future, and it will help with our administrative duties that are currently being held by myself, the manager, with the support from finance and facility staff. In 2021, our department created these high-level strategies for frontline staff and public to get a quick picture of our goals. All these tie in with our charter of fostering a sense of community through quality programs. We collaborate with others. We support people. We actually change our to-do lists to to-who lists. So we look at uh, the activities and the actions that we do when we think of the people who could be impacted by that, and that really motivates us to make change. We foster community connections and collaborate with others where possible. We enhance our knowledge by engaging, listening, and learning from others. We welcome diversity and uniqueness, growth, participation, and play. We sustain our programs by encouraging participation, being fiscally responsible, and maintaining staff capacity. 
We engage the community through programs and initiatives, and we bring awareness of our programs through promotions, marketing, and network. This is a list of the main legislations and regulations that we're required to follow. Many of these are related to the Child Care and Early Years Act. We've also identified key plans and studies for our department, as well as associations which help us implement quality programs. Pedagogy is the method and practice of teaching. The How Does Learning Happen resource is the foundation of our child care and early on programs. It focuses on learning and development through relationships, particularly the relationships between children, families, and the educators. It outlines goals for children, expectations for programs, and questions for reflection based on the four foundations of belonging, well-being, engagement, and expression. This research discusses the importance of creating a sense of belonging through fostering relationships and connections, how to create environments and experiences to engage children in learning through play and inquiry, the importance of supporting children's sense of self, health, and well-being, and how to support positive self-expression and communication in all forms. Early on, centers offer free, high-quality programs for families and children from birth to six years old. They are welcoming places that offer a range of services and resources where families can join fun activities such as reading, storytelling, sing-along, and games, get advice from professionals trained in early childhood development, find out about other family services in our community, connect with others with young children, and our centers are open weekdays, evenings, and weekends to fit the needs of our families in our community. And those schedules will evolve based on the need of our families. We offer many recreation programs in North Perth. We've provided you with a handout which summarizes the programs offered in the past year by us as well as other community groups. Recreation and leisure, sport and non-sport, community events and programs, tournaments, workshops and courses, swimming lessons and day camps. We offer programs for all ages. Coordination of a program involves the development of an idea and logistics of implementation, cost analysis, registration and accounts receivable, coordination of the programs and evaluation. We develop the Community Connection newsletter to promote our programs as well as those in our community we also use other methods for advertising and promoting our programs and events. North Perth has been a registered High Five member for 20 years. High Five is Canada's high quality standard for recreation and leisure programs. It was founded in 2001 by Parks and Recreation Ontario as a national standard for children's recreation programs. Based on extensive research on the characteristics of quality programs, High Five established the five principles that ensures positive experiences in recreation and leisure settings. A caring leader, the opportunity to make friends, the opportunity to play, the opportunity to master skills, the opportunity to participate. I have a video from High Five that explains these principles further.
leave it up to you. What do you guys want to do right now for the next 10 pop, minutes? Pop, 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 pop. Good. Good. Five not only provides recreation professionals with training, but also gives organization program assessment tools, policies and procedures, and resources to raise awareness about the component parts of operating successful programs. An amendment to the Police Services Act 1990 legislated that all Ontario municipalities develop and adopt community safety well-being plans by July 1, 2021. The implementation of the Stratford per St. Mary's Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan is the responsibility of the Community Safety and Wellbeing Partnership Council, of which Municipal of North Perth is a part of the executive leadership team. They provide direction, planning, oversight, and leadership in the implementation of the, Canadian Sa the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan, which provides a roadmap for inclusive, connective, and coordinated safety and wellbeing planning ensures a proactive and integrated approach to addressing local crime and complex social issues on a sustainable basis, identifies key priorities for safety and well-being planning locally, supports and strengthens existing initiatives related to communities and safety and well-being, addresses local service and system gaps. As part of our local initiative, North Perth has a member of understanding for a pilot program with the position of community developer and social worker for the municipality. This position will be part of the program department and begins in January. Finally, we'd like to highlight ways council can support the programs department. Share information with citizens participate in programs, and invite citizens to contact us about programs. On behalf of the programs team, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Gangle. It's not every night that we have a little bit of music that makes you tap your toes, so we appreciated the, the video and its uh, background track um, and the information, too. Uh, I learned things I didn't know. Um, colleagues, questions? in support of your learning about what our programs department is doing. Council looks satisfied. That's good. We like that. All right. Uh, this matter does not require a resolution from uh, Council, I believe, to receive anything. So, Ms. Gangle, thank you for uh, the enlightened uh, approach to what you're doing, and, and we're grateful for all that you do. Thank you. I'm here anytime you have any questions. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we have um, no reports then coming from the facilities department uh, pursuant to that agenda change we made earlier in our meeting. Mr. Newell's not uh, with us this evening. That means we can turn, on, uh, turn uh, forward to item 5.6, reports from our manager of environmental services. Uh, we have no report from that department either this evening, uh, which allows us to move down to item 5.7, reports from the manager of operations. As item 5.7.1, the manager of operations brings forward proposed amendments to the North Perth traffic bylaw as amended with a focus to prohibit parking on a section of Riverview Drive in the Lusto Ward. Uh, I see that Mr. Couch, our uh, manager of operations, is here to address the matter. 
Mr. Couch, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor Kingsburg, members of council. This report is a result of some comments that we received back from trail users. And if you look at the image on the screen, um, it, it shows the southern end of Riverview where the trail crosses the white line down the middle. And at that point, cars uh, who want to access uh, the trail are parking. Not many. Uh, talk to some of the residents, maybe two or three vehicles will be parked there, but they create sightline problems, especially on the curve. And because of that, we can restrict the parking to force the cars back to the straightaway and create a safer environment for the crossings for the trail users. Uh, it's a simple effort and it won't be costly. We have the signage in stock and the recommendation in front of you is to amend the bylaw to restrict the parking in that area between the two uh, yellow lines uh, to prohibit traf uh, traffic to park in that area in the future. Thank you, Mr. Couch. Um, I don't think we're seeing a direct amendment to the bylaw. I, I spoke with the clerk and asked about that, so I gather that next uh, time we may actually see um, a resolution that is a bylaw resolution. But um, Council has the opportunity, I guess, through this uh, resolution that's been proposed to uh, consent to bringing forward a bylaw amendment uh, formally, as I understand it, just for Council's information. Um, all right, uh, questions, uh, first comments on Mr. Couch's report. Uh, Councillor Duncan, let me find your microphone. They've scrambled these a little bit on me, but we'll get that fixed soon. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you, uh, I had some communication with uh, another resident today when he seen that this was on the agenda, and he asked if I could bring this forward, that uh, maybe that the staff looks at all of the trail crossings in North Perth where they cross, especially some of our rural roads. Line 81 in particular has been some parking problems because of the, the crest in the road there. So I'm wondering if staff wants to uh, have a look at each one of those crossings and bring back maybe the, a recommendation whether we sign no parking within a certain distance of the trail in each one of those locations. Yeah, very good. We can do that. There's an opportunity to work with the f facilities department that we've discussed as well at some of those locations to develop some off-road parking opportunities so yes we'll look at that and then coordinate possibly for the capital budget next year additional parking facilities at some of those rural crossings where there's some high speed situations as well perfect uh, anyone else with questions or first comments all right i have a resolution then for consideration related to this matter um uh, at this point focused but as you've heard from mr couch there may be some uh, more general work uh, coming forward uh, the resolution as follows the council of the municipality of north perth amends traffic bylaw 47-pw-2000 to restrict parking uh, on riverview drive on both sides from the southern limit of leisure lane to the westerly limit of the driveway at 650 riverview drive can i call for mover on this one Councillor Rothwell, thank you. And our seconder will be, I think I saw Councillor Nudem's hand up, so that's who it will be. Um, discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you, Mr. Couch. All right, uh, let's move forward then to uh, our next segment, item 5.8, reports from the Development and Pro Protective Services Department. As item 5.8.1, North Perth Manager of Development and Protective Services and Fire Chief Jenny Pape will provide us with an overview of the Consolidated Development and Protective Services Department, a group brought together relatively recently. As with other uh, departmental overviews, uh, Chief Pape, welcome. We know you're remote tonight, so uh, welcome to the meeting. Thanks, Mayor Todd. Good evening, Council. My apologies for not being there in person. I'm feeling a little under the weather, and I didn't um, feel it appropriate to share the germs with everyone. Um, in 2022, the Municipal Restructuring Plan introduced the Development and Protective Services Service Area. Development and Protective Services includes the following departments, Building, Planning, Bylaw, and Fire. Next slide, please. The organizational chart before you illustrates staffing for this service area. I will speak more to each department more fully in the slides that follow. 
the manager of development and protective services participates in police services board meetings as well. Once the new structure of the PSB is confirmed by the province, the manager of development and protective services will replace the CAO as North Perth staff representative on that committee. Next slide, please. To bring staff together under the newly formed development and protective services service area, renovations to the List Wolf Fire Station were undertaken. The renovations allowed for the creation of six additional workstations, a conference room, and a new service counter, utilizing a lounge space that was seldom used since the construction of the station in 2010. Building planning and bylaw services staff relocated to the fire station in late summer. The renovations also allowed for the opportunity to improve security and accessibility to upgrade to energy efficient lighting in the office area and replace the outdated phone system. Next slide, please. In 2022, North Perth's long serving CBO, Ed Podnowitz retired. The municipality has since retained the contracted services of RSM building consultants to provide plans review for complex buildings, as well as to provide training and mentoring expertise. The position of chief building official will be reposted in early 2023. In the interim, one building inspector has been promoted to the role of acting deputy chief building official. County planning staff also work out of the Listwell Fire Station Monday to Thursday and are available by phone and email on Fridays. Building permits issued for the first nine months of 2022 exceeded permits issued in 2021 by 52, generating more than $645,000 in permit fees in just the first three quarters of 2022. The building department is a self-funding department. In 2022, the building department continued to expand and enhance its bi-monthly meetings to encourage greater collaboration amongst municipal staff from finance, operations, environmental services, fire, building and planning service areas with respect to building and planning applications. These meetings often include pre-consultation with applicants to streamline the application process for both the applicant and the municipality. This model has been well received and adopted by other jurisdictions within Perth County. Looking ahead to 2023, building and planning services staff will continue to learn and collaborate with respect to the implications of Bill 23, more homes built faster, Bill 108, more homes built more choice, or more homes more choice, and Bill 109, more homes for everyone with implications to development charges and tighter timelines still to be confirmed by the province, we look forward to collaborating with other municipal service areas to find opportunities to streamline processes. To address concerns relating to affordable housing and the introduction of additional dwelling units, development and protective service staff looks forward to working with strategic initiative staff to develop a registry of rental units. The intent of the regist registry will be to assist the municipality in protecting the health and safety of persons residing in residential res rental units. Building and fire safety inspections will be funded through the permit and registry application process. Next slide, please. In 2022, North Perth began contracting with tenant security services to provide bylaw enforcement services. Feedback from the public has been positive. During the year, the Humane Society of Kitchener-Waterloo, Stratford, Perth, issued two muzzle orders and investigated three reports of dog bites in North Perth. K-9 control officers worked together with our bylaw enforcement officer on multiple occasions to reports of dogs running at large. Our bylaw enforcement officer has been invited to ride along with K-9 control officers in 2023 to encourage information sharing and to foster relationships between our organizations. In 2023, bylaw enforcement will work with our clerk's department and other service areas to update bylaws, including those that deal with noise, animal control, and parking. As time permits, set fees will also be reviewed. Next slide, please. The North Perth Fire Department operates from three stations. Our 
staff complement includes three full-time positions and 65 volunteers. Our goal is to grow our roster of volunteer firefighters to 70, with 30 operating from the Listwell station and 20 volunteers at each of our Atwood and Moncton stations. We focus on three lines of defense. The first being public fire safety education. The second, fire safety standards and enforcement, and that's where inspections and fire prevention activities enforcing our burn bylaw, that's where that falls. And as a fail-safe, emergency response is our third line of defense. 2022 is a busy year for the MPFD. In January, emergency dispatch services were transferred from Stratford Fire Department to Owen Sound Police Services, ensuring compliance with new next generation 911 requirements. In the spring, a new open air burn bylaw was passed and educational materials were created and distributed. Despite those efforts, some property owners have been charged for burning outside of the provisions of the bylaw. The fees collected offset the costs associated with unnecessary emergency response. In May, the NPFD hired 14 recruits, the largest recruit class in NPFD history. These hires filled vacancies not filled during COVID and also augment our complement of volunteers who are responding to increased call volumes driven by community growth. Recruits were promoted to probationary status in November after an intense training period. The same day that those recruits were promoted to probationary status, we experienced a structure fire in Moncton. We were able to augment our response with six firefighters that day as a result of this hire. In October, the establishing and regulating bylaw was updated, replacing, replacing the bylaw that was almost 20 years old. The bylaw updates the organizational structure of the MBFD. It's mandatory firefighter training and certification standards, agility testing and physical examination expectations for our recruits, clarifies volunteer firefighter leave of absence requirements, legislated fire safety inspection requirements, and confirms the municipality's reliance on volunteer firefighters. In 2022, 22 firefighters completed first responder training, a certification that had lapsed due to the pandemic. Moving forward, this training will be offered on a three-year cycle to ensure qualification currency. This training will enable our firefighters to administer naloxone as required. Throughout the year, the MPFD has utilized social media as a method of educating our public on topics, including the use of green lights by volunteer firefighters responding to emergencies, the requirements of our open air burning bylaw, the importance of keeping fire hydrants clear of obstructions, fire prevention tips, and also to inform the public of emergency incidents. While our fleet and our Listwell and Moncton stations are the envy of many fire departments, projects relating to health and safety at the Atwood station will be proposed in the 2023 budget. These projects include upgrades to the ventilation, lighting, parking, and use of personal vehicles at emergency scenes. Mandatory training and certification standards were introduced by the province in 2022. Our volunteer firefighters are required to be trained to the same standard as career firefighters in larger urban centers. To meet this requirement and the training needs of our community's changing building stock and an increased roster to train, a full-time training officer position is being proposed in the 2023 budget. Next slide, please. At the last slide, I wanted to take a moment to highlight some of MPFD's efforts to engage our youth after a COVID pause. We introduced our first ever week-long junior firefighter camp, girls empowerment sessions in partnership with M North Perth programs and story time with the MPFD in partnership with the North Perth Public Library. We collaborated with the specialty high skills major classes at LDSS, providing hands-on fire extinguisher training and discussion about careers in the fire service with more than 120 high school students. We also took, our first, took on our first co-op student in the, from the high school and she will be learning with us until January. 
We look forward to offering more cooperative learning opportunities in 2023. By investing in our youth, we are planning for our future. Thank you for this, your time this evening, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Thank you, Chief Pape. Very informative, very colorful last slide. I have certainly seen some of these activities in our community, and uh, I'm grateful for uh, the, the foresight of uh, working with the next generation. Uh, colleagues, any questions or comments to inform you about the work of the uh, Development and Protective Services Department. Everyone's looking comfortable, Jenny. Uh, we hope you're comfortable. You, I, I talk to you enough that I know your voice is a little off tonight, so we hope you get better soon. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's no resolution required here, councillors, so we can move forward then to item 5.8.2. In this one, council is invited to amend the North Perth Zoning Bylaw for a property on Mitchell Road South in the Elma Ward, currently being styled Listable Gardens. This action will allow the proponents to build a mixed residential commercial use subdivision. County of Perth Planner Susanna Reed is with us to present an overview of the department's recommendation. Welcome, Ms. Reed. Thank you very much, Mayor, and good evening, Council. Um, this the public meeting for this fall was held last Monday, so it's uh, coming back to Council tonight with a recommendation of approval. And I'll walk through the um, changes that have been made uh, as a result of the comments received at the public meeting. So the property, as the Mayor has mentioned, is on Mitchell Road South. It's the property that Pierre Chauvin spoke to earlier tonight. Um, the development is a mixed-use residential and commercial development. Um, and the title of this development is Listable Gardens. So if we move to the next slide. Um, the presentation is walking through the changes in the um, zoning bylaw amendment, um, which is provided to Council tonight for approval. Um, and this re uh, it follows the same order as the comments in the planning report that you received in your package. So the first change is a change to the definition of affordable housing. Uh, Council will remember that 15% of the units are proposed to be affordable. Um, and in reviewing the application, um, the, we noted that the word renter was, uh, was omitted from the CMHC definition, which the developer is referring to, because they are um, receiving some funding from the CMHC. So this changes the monthly rent um, from $2,100 to um, $1,037. So that's a, a good change to catch. Um, the next one um, is with regards to the minimum commercial gross floor area. So if we move to the next slide, um, there's an addition in two places to the reference to a minimum of 13,900 square feet of commercial development um, to ensure that there is a commercial uh, presence established in the Listable Gardens development along Mitchell Road South. If we move to the next slide, um, there is the uh, a planting strip provision added so that the um, west side of the development where it abuts John O'Malley's property will have a planting strip or fence um, in order to protect the sight lines between the townhouses that are proposed to the west of the development and the Listville Gardens property. And the next slide... <coughs> um, that um, the comments, as we discussed at the, at the public meeting, um, with regards to the parking, were reviewed by the municipality's traffic engineer, um, Julia Salvini, Salvini Consulting. And we, um, as a result of that review, are adding a sentence that says that the commercial parking can be used for visiting parking for the apartment buildings. So the request by the developer is to reduce the number of parking spaces from 1.5 spaces per unit to 1.25 spaces per unit. Um, and that's considered appropriate by the traffic engineer in this situation because there is the, the commercial parking available for visitors to the apartment buildings. Um, and then there were, um, uh, if we move to the next slide, there were good comments received from, or appropriate comments received from John O'Malley, who is the developer to the west. Um, so this slide is the, shows the Lewis Wall Gardens property. If you can see that, it's... Um, as to this, <laughs> this, I turned this on the side so it would be the same configuration of the site plan, which is on the next slide. Um, so 
the red line, the, the property outlined in red is where townhouses are proposed by John O'Malley. Um, and then the slide is turned on its side. So to the east, between the red out, property outlined in red and Mitchell Road South is the Listable Gardens property. And the comments that John O'Malley had raised were with regards to the height of the building, the proximity to of the um, six-story residential dwellings proposed by, or apartment buildings proposed by Listable Gardens, proximity of those um, apartment buildings to the um, two-story townhouses that John O'Malley is planning on building in that area outlined in red, and privacy for those for the backyards of those uses. He also requested a 10-foot fence along the shared property line. He was concerned about lighting from the headlights and outdoor lighting from the um, Listable Gardens property, and then lock grading and drainage and, and ensuring that there's no um, stormwater management or, or stormwater flooding or flowing over to um, the O'Malley site. So um, all of these issues were followed up with um, MHBC planning um, and um, the MHC uh, group has provided a number of um, excellent slides, which I'll, uh, were in your package, and I'll um, run through them quickly now. So the next slide is the site plan for the development. And this is provided simply for information purposes. It could change from this. Um, but the, there is a distance of 20 meters from the apartment building to um, the O'Malley development at the west. So again, that air photo with the red outline of the townhouses is where the O'Malley site is. And then um, you can see on the site plan, the larger drawing, that there's 20 meters between um, the lot line between the O'Malley site and Listowel Gardens and the six-story apartment buildings. And that information is provided by MHBC um, as that is the same width of a municipal road. If we move to the next slide, um, this is showing the angular plane um, between the uh, drawing is the six story apartment building and that represents the 20 meters between the proposed residential development and the lot line between the O'Malley site and Listowel Gardens. So the 45 um, degree angular plane is um, commonly used in urban developments in order to protect um, the backyards or the or privacy of neighboring residential uses. So it, it may be that the, that the folks on the top floor of this apartment building can see into the, over the, to the house, but there is substantial protection here um, between the uh, balconies of the apartments and the um, the proposed development behind it. Um, to, to also, to say that the um, that we respect our um, you know thanks to MHBC for providing this drawing because um, this mid-rise residential development is new to Perth County. We're looking for tools in order to evaluate and ensure that we're considering um, residential intensification appropriately. Um, so um, the Perth County Planning Department is working on developing residential intensification guidelines and receiving tools like this from MHBC, who's working in urban centres, is helpful for for developing tools in Perth County in order to support the type of intensification that we're seeing in Listowel. And then finally, on the next slide, um, th these shadow analysis drawings were included in the council package. Um, so I've included in, on this slide the spring and fall equinox at 10 a.m. and noon. So you can see um, that at 10 a.m. at the spring and fall equinox, um, you, you, there is... Um, there is shade on, in the townhouse um, backyards and not by noon. And then if we go to the next slide, we can see at 10 a.m. on winter solstice and 10 a.m. noon. By 10 a.m. noon, the shade is, is moving out of the backyards, perhaps not completely out of the backyards. And then the next one um, on summer solstice at 6 p.m., the shade comes the other direction. So all of this information was sent back to John O'Malley um, with a request that he identify any further concerns, and I didn't hear from them as of um, tonight's meeting. So that concludes the review of um, the 
Uh, zoning bylaw amendment and the recommendation is that the amendment be approved as um, revised and incorporated into the council package tonight. All right, thank you, Ms. Reed. Uh, colleagues, uh, questions or first comments on this matter? Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, and through you to uh, uh, Senior Planner. Uh, Susanna, the, uh, when we look at the uh, site plan uh, that uh, you spoke of uh, before, there we are. Uh, so I take it when I look at the enlargement, uh, it's on the plan, there's uh, simply a, a grass area. There's no uh, uh, planting strip other than grass uh, on that plan. Is that correct? Or there's there's a, does not appear to be any uh, fencing. Is that correct? You, Mayor Kaysenberg, I haven't reviewed the site plan yet. I brought this along so that Council could see that 20 meter difference or distance between the building and the... So we haven't provided comments. The, the big, the one change in the bylaw for Council's consideration tonight that the Department is recommending is that a planting strip requirement be added. So the planting strip um, hadn't been included in the zoning bylaw amendment, so that would mean that a fence or, or trees would be a hedge would be required around along that lot line. Uh, just further to that, I certainly encourage that uh, and in, in, agree in agreement with the uh, proposed change in the bylaw, I would just suggest that uh, any uh, planting strip or if there is a fence be constructed on the this uh, property uh, as opposed to uh, along the lot line. Uh, traditionally, that's always an issue of concern in terms of who's responsible going forward. And given the fact that this is a zoning bylaw amendment, and there'll be a site plan agreement on here, it should, in my view, be solely on at the expense and the construction and maintained by this property owner. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. Any other comments or questions at this point? All right. Um, so I have before me um, a couple of resolutions for our consideration about this matter as follows. Uh, first, that North Perth Council receives the report entitled Zoning Bylaw Amendment Number ZBA-03-2022, submitted by 1006648252 Manitoba Limited Care of Nizar Mawani, dated December 12, 2022, affecting lands described as Park Lot 30, Concession 1, Elma Ward, Municipality of North Perth and that North Perth Council approves Zoning Bylaw Amendment Number ZBA-03-2022, uh, submitted by 1006648255 Manitoba Limited Care of Nizar Mawani, dated December 12, 2022, affecting lands described as Park Lot 30, Concession 1, Elma Ward, Municipality of North Perth. Councillor Rothwell will move. Thank you. Councillor Richardson will be our seconder on this one. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. And next up then is the, um, the bylaw, as follows, bylaw number 151-2022, being a bylaw to amend the North Perth Zoning Bylaw number 6-ZB-1999 as amended. Be introduced, read, and considered read at first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Deputy Mayor Kellum will serve as our mover on this one. Councillor Blazek will be our seconder. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Council, this is a very significant moment in the life of this community. And uh, the fact that uh, we're going to see some affordable housing come in this project is very exciting to me personally. So congratulations to our developer team who worked on this, and thank you for the planning team's efforts uh, to, to get this uh, to us. All right, let's, um, let's move forward then to um, item six on our agenda. Um, and, and Ms. Reed, thank you for uh, being here tonight. Um, for item 6.1, councillors, are there any reports you'd like to ask of staff or of our committees? 
Seeing none, let's uh, move forward then to item seven. We have received no additional items of correspondence beyond uh, anything that was in our consent agenda, which means we can skip forward to item uh, eight, which is consideration of bylaws that have been recommended to us for action. For item 8.1, Council is asked to authorize uh, a mobile home agreement with parties Lannan. Any questions before we consider this matter from Council? All right, I have a bylaw enabling resolution as follows at bylaw number 155 2022, being a bylaw to authorize the signing of a mobile home agreement with Terry Lannan, Angie Lannan, and Heather Lannan, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk concealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call for a mover? Councillor Johnston looks good for that. Councillor Duncan, as our seconder, uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, that means we move forward to item nine on our agenda. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion this evening? Seeing none, let's move to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? And uh, we should always check, of course, if someone is connected uh, remotely, whether they wish to uh, join the conversation. Uh, we love to hear good news stories in the community, and this is the opportunity for that. Anyone? We're not seeing any. We're getting closer to Christmas. Maybe that's a good news story. I hope so. Councillor Blazak, let me just find the right microphone. Go ahead. Um, I don't know how often this happens in North Perth, but um, one young gentleman who lives in Atwood um, just um, committed to service with our Canadian military. So um, I feel like that's a pretty proud thing for our community. Thank you. I'm, I'm not sure that in my term of office we've we've had a, a recognition of that, but um, that's a wonderful thing. Do we have do we have the name of this gentleman? Would it, would, it, would he consent to it being shared or? Um, he's my nephew. His name is Caden Morrison. He attends LDSS currently and uh, was sworn in last Monday. Wonderful. Well, congratulations to Caden on behalf of the council and the community. We're, we're glad to have that. And I think uh, um, now that we know that this could be done, we should consider doing this uh, on a regular basis as it comes to our attention. Um, thank you for that, Councillor Blazak. Anyone else with um, comments or exciting news in the community? Okay. Uh, let's move forward then to agenda item number 11. Uh, at this time, um, uh, we do have uh, two matters to be considered in a closed session meeting of council. Um, so I will read the resolution that enables us to do that. Uh, as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth proceeds in camera at 8.22 p.m. to address a matter pertaining to the following. Uh, first, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, regarding property tax penalty and interest. And two, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals, affecting the municipality or local board and a position plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board regarding property described as Concession 1, Part Lot 33, Municipality of North Perth. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Anstead, thank you. And uh, Councillor Richardson will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate about this matter? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Um, that means at this hour that we will turn our attention to an in-camera session. Um, any staff who've been asked to depart should depart, including those who are connected by virtual technologies. Uh, we'll need a moment to uh, reconfigure things uh, for the closed session audiovisual. And um, I see that our IT uh, uh, support is here to help us with that. So if people will bear with us for a few moments, uh, we will get things underway for a closed session.
All right. Uh, we believe we're uh, back in open session. We should check uh, YouTube, the, the the live broadcast, to see whether we are communicating. YouTube is live? Okay. Um, all right. So, um, uh, with regards to agenda item number 12, I can report that um, Council did deliberate on two matters which were defined in our resolution to enter closed session, and staff was given direction on both of those matters uh, pursuant to usual procedure in closed session. Uh, next, then, uh, we have um, the opportunity to consider our confirmatory bylaw. Uh, this is uh, done at near the end of the meeting to confirm all of the actions and business of the council meeting. And I have a draft of that as follows, that bylaw number 158-2022 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the council of the municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Richardson, thank you. And her second will be Councillor Anstead. Thank you. All right. Uh, any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote, hoping that eScribe uh, delivers. Timed out. Sometimes it times out. So let me just check. We've got um, Councillor Rothwell is in favor. Councillor Johnston, you're in favor. And Councillor Blazek, you're in favor. That is the nine required, and that is carried. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, we have completed the deliberation and taken action on the business that has come before us tonight. We have one last duty, and that's to adjourn. I have a motion to that effect as follows, that the council meeting adjourns at 9.23. Uh, PM to meet again for general council business on Monday, December 19th, 2022. Moved by Councillor Duncan, I see, and seconded by Councillor Nordam. Um, that is not debatable, so let's have that vote. Okay, so Councillor Rothwell is in favor, Councillor Johnston is in favor, who else? Uh, Councillor Blazek is in favor, and that's the nine accounted for, and that is carried. Our next regular council meeting is Monday, December 19th, 2022. I strongly suggest you wear your Santa hat or your elf hat or something similar uh, until that date this meeting is adjourned.